Hey coaches. So this video I've been sitting on for a little bit, wanting to be able to chat about uh, the kinds of language we pick up on, the, the quality of language we pick up on from the clients. It's a common question that I get from my, my coaches in training. How do, you, how do you grab the more interesting language, the most helpful language to pick up on? How do you integrate that into your questions when Maybe you're working with someone who's pretty talkative and they, you know, in a transcript, they give you three, four, five minutes of a speech. Your brain's trying to sort through all of that information, the details, the story, the, the, the significant bits and the extra interesting four out of five, five out of five strong, powerful language that would be ideal if you could bring into the next question, but you got to sift through so much to get to that question. And, and that's what this video is about. How do you, how do, you do that sifting as you um, have the, the sand, the grains of the details go through your hands and, and you're trying to grab onto the most meaningful aspects of the client's language? How do you do that in, in real time? So with this, uh, I'll share my screen on some of this. Um, first off, it's, it's very important to to see this as a skill that's developed in the long run for coaches. I like to train coaches from the very beginning to have their, their ears in the tuning process so that while they're taking notes, they're trying to minimize how many notes are taken and focusing on more of that interesting and, and transformational language that will be helpful, language that when you bring it into the powerful question, it truly makes it powerful. So looking at this critical skill of sifting, Right off the bat, I'd like to set up the expectations that this is a long-term growth, growth path, growth goal as a coach. But as we get started, some things to consider uh, as part of the sifting process would be what to let go of, what to not hold on to as hard or, or strongly. First off, you have the details. Sometimes in coach training, I'm asked about interrupting clients, and it is an important skill to interrupt clients when you're hearing a bunch of details and there's no forward processing happening. You might interrupt those, those moments because it's not about the coach fully understanding all of the, the details, but rather it's, it's about the coach understanding just enough to help the client do their own thinking about those details. So if you're hearing good bit of de details, when the meeting is, what time it is, how many people there are, allow that type of language to sift through. You might only capture a very small amount in your notes, but as practically as you can, try to eliminate the details from your note taking. So you're not taking your eyes off of the client to write about the details. And while you're doing that, you might miss the client's face shift, their tone shift, their body language shift in some way. You want to be as present as you can with the client. So jot down a detail from time to time, but try to minimize it. Also, if you're going to go back to those notes for some inspiration about the question to ask next, you, you don't want to get stuck in all the details on your notepad or your, your chat box um, and miss the most inspirational language. So details allow that to sift through. Also, lesser forms of the client's language. The client might talk about the meeting on Friday and later they might describe it as a big conflict. And later they might describe it as um, all out war or something like that, uh, or just a battle royale or whatever. <laughs> Maybe they're being overly dramatic. The more interesting form of the language, battle royale, is gonna be more important to anchor onto than the meeting on Friday. Uh, if the client is talking about getting a, promo or getting a, a pay raise, they're going for a, a salary increase, and they talk about hopefully they'll they'll be able to earn five thousand dollars more. And as you coach around the significance of that five thousand, they mention that it would give them the opportunity. You know, not that it's a big deal, but it'd be nice to have a little extra bit of uh, vacation at the end of the year. And they were hoping to maybe take this trip, and they didn't have to rely on the five thousand, but it would give them that opportunity to take that trip. Five thousand dollars is the lesser form of taking the trip at the end of the year with the family and maybe just a bit more exploration. And you say, so what would, what would it be like for you to be able to go on such and such trip with the family at the end of the year, having earned it? And maybe the client says it gives them that, a, a little taste of freedom that they are able to, to give themselves and to give their, their family. 
that little taste of freedom is significant enough client language so that, yeah, of course, it'd be great to use it in, in the powerful questions in that one session. But if you were to continue to mention a little taste of freedom in two, three sessions later with a, a question or two, how is this helping you, you know, this present topic helping you get closer to that little taste of freedom at the end of the year, they'll know exactly what you mean. It's very sticky language. It's meaningful language. So as you're sifting through the language of the client, let go of the stuff that's less impactful. That might be the, the simpler forms, the lesser forms of the, the same language. If the client sets their own language aside, they say, you know, that metaphor doesn't really fit or um, no, it's not, it's not um, pain uh, or fear of pain. It's more fear of missing out. Well, I, I need to be careful not to bring in fear of pain anymore, even if they were talking about it quite a bit. Now I'm moving over to fear of missing out. And the most important part of this section of what to sift is this piece. For all coaches at all levels, you're working with a client and you recognize that, wow, this client has given you so much, so many great things that you could pick up on. And as you're trying to take some notes, but keep your eyes as much as you can on the client as, as you are um, hearing some great things, and you're like, oh, let me write a, a word that describes that metaphor, or let me just log that in my brain. You see yourself letting go of really meaningful language or they have this laugh and their eyes light up at the beginning of the paragraph and by the end their their body language changes again and, and you recognize it doesn't make sense to go back to laugh to go back to the eyes lighting up and it can be hard you're, you're recognizing that some great things are falling through your fingers but that's okay it's okay to allow that kind of stuff to sift out, sift out as as long as you're also grabbing onto really meaningful stuff. You cannot, it's just pretty much impossible to capture every meaningful word. And it's even more impossible to utilize every meaningful word, phrase, metaphor, shift in behavior from the client. It's too much for the coach to put on their shoulders. Know if you can capture 20% of the most impactful language that the client offers during a session, it's going to be usually a lot more than they'd be able to process and witness in themselves if they're all on their own. You being empathetically there and capturing that much is a great service to them. So be okay letting go of some of the great stuff as long as you are tuning your ears to other great stuff. And that's, again, long-term goals. Be able to sift in order to make room for the important stuff. So what do you hold on to? Um, these are some categories that's useful to talk through. Uh, emotions language, not that we're just hammering on, where's this fear coming from? Where's that fear coming from? Where's the fear coming from? We're just knowing a oh, fear is on the table. You know, what's the significance of the fear? And that leads to other language. And so be ready to explore emotion for maybe one step down, maybe two steps down. And that yields some more transformational language, oftentimes around values and motivation. This is the starter kit of good client language. When the client talks about why something is important to them, that is their values. That represents what that matters to them. When the client talks about their, their why, their energy towards something, their purpose or driving forward towards a goal, that's their motivation. Be able to pick up on that language. Uh, however, this language around the emotions, why a person cares, why they're per pursuing something, it is a little bit less than very strong language around statements of being, who this client is. It's a, a little bit different to say, I, I have a little bit of a fear of missing out because it's really important for me to, to show that I'm invested in all of the main events of the company. It, it says that I care about what the company is doing. That's emotions, language, fear, and values, to be seen, to be present, to show that I care. Uh, it's also a bit of motivation. That's great. And when the client says, so I feel like I'm, I, I'm, fo I, I'm FOMO, uh, Brian, I'm, 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 this version of me is like always in that fear of missing out category. And I needed to have a different, like a different approach on certain days when I, when I can't set aside my regular everyday work. Okay. What did that language show? Now, Brian, 
has this labeled version of the self, a statement of who Brian is, is fear of missing out Brian, FOMO Brian. And today's, in session Brian is like, I need to be able to set aside that perspective and that, that desire, that version of the self in favor of something different. So to be, as a coach, to be able to say, so you really enjoy being the FOMO Brian, the fear of missing out Brian, but what other kind of Brian needs to show up on those days where you can't and you need to miss out? And that leads to a different statement of being. It also kind of leads to characters. And if you can have a, a dedicated to the, like the get the job done Brian versus the fear of missing out Brian, you now have two different characters and they can kind of have a perspective conversation, a, a values conversation. Statements of being have a lot of power, and usually have a strength between sessions. These are characters or or identity-based statements that uh, speak to the core of who the person is. They're usually a combination of all of these things in one little statement. Now, another thing to hold on to, to prioritize with the note-taking. This sounds a little bit like we're going backwards, but sometimes when a client is at the beginning of a session, maybe in the middle of a session, something shifted for them, they'll say, say something very practical. It could sound like, you know, now that I'm talking this through, what I think I really need is, is some sort of plan of um, how to approach my manager on Friday. At that moment, it's important for the coach to kind of take note, okay, need a plan or a plan. Even if it's just mental, this person told me what they want from our session. They just told me what they want from this processing that they're going to do with me. Possibly the worst thing we can do in the moment is to say, okay, so what do you need by the end of our session today? Um, the classic marker 3.2 with the ICF competencies markers, um, or in my model, the R and the start model. Uh, what are we after by the end of our session date? Well, if they just told you what they're after, don't miss it. It might sound pretty mundane, and you can elevate it by asking them about the significance of it, but uh, just don't miss it. Don't miss it. And especially if that statement of need that might come in the middle of the session sounds a bit different from what came at the beginning of the session. You can help the client reflect on Okay, so it's not about the plan after you've talked it through. It's about other people that might be needing to be involved in this conversation. What have you learned from the beginning of our conversation and now? A different statement of need should be reflected on and help the client. And we want to help the client reflect on what they perceive they, they're after by the end of the session without just blankly asking for it. If they say it, hear it, use it. Expressions or patterns of language, these are big. Um, I've got that LinkedIn post uh, on sold, S-O-L-D. You can check that out. Um, the idea is if you see a shift in behavior, some sort of the eyes lighting up, the laugh uh, around something that might not deem a laugh, you, or they have some sort of big aha moment that's expressed through their behavior and tone or energy. Or they've said the same word four, five, six times in the last couple of paragraphs or exchanges. There's something significant usually there. And the main thing is just to point it out, highlight it, no judgment. Just say, hey, over the past few questions, I've noticed you've said the word doubt a lot. Like, I don't know, six times? What's that doubt about? Or when when you said that's what it is, your, your eyes lit up like the stars in the sky. What did you just realize? Expression shifts and patterns are, make for great observations. Don't miss those. And then finally, title language, one of my favorite concepts. Um, I need to do extra content on this, but the idea of title language comes from years, seven years of assessing coaches. And when I'm looking at transcripts and uh, when I'm doing demos and I see the opportunity, uh, it often will stand out to me now after, after working in this space for a while. When the client says a phrase or a sentence that it just seems like it encapsulates the whole thing, that phrase expresses their entire, their entire struggle. For instance, in the getting the pay raise, the $5,000, the vacation, the freedom, maybe the client says, I'm wanting the freedom, but it's going to take a sacrifice that I'm not sure it's worth. That sentence freedom at at the cost of a sacrifice it almost could be the title of the entire session so if you could 
title the books uh, or the chapters of your or your work with the client, each coaching session being a chapter in that book, um, there's usually some sort of phrase in that session. And many times it comes in within the first third, somewhere around the end of the agenda setting. The client says a phrase, a sentence, and it, it just seems to capture it all. That's great to be able to write down, particularly in your long-term notes. And practically speaking, when I'm doing note-taking, I sometimes have taken that phrase that I see as the title language and drop it into the title of or the subject line of an email or message that I'm sending over my client. Title language is just a fun thing, a little additional piece of language to not not sift out. And uh, a good use of title language is at the end of the session to be able to say, over these past 30 minutes, you've really been focused on freedom at the cost of that sacrifice. What have you learned about what you want with that sacrifice? What, do you've, what have you learned about the cost of the freedom you're after? Or something like that. So pointing to the overarching theme title, asking a question about learning by the end of the session, it's just a nice little touch at the end. It synthesizes things really well with the client as you uh, bring in that kind of language. The whole point of the idea of sifting is capturing meaningful client language. And I'll just drop this in here because it's, it's a part of the picture. The reason it's so important is because in the absence of meaningful client language, we rely on meaningful coach language. And while that can be helpful, it requires that the client does extra processing to understand us. And it also focuses more on what we bring to the table and us almost being the problem solver or understanding of the client's situation. And, and it's so much extra work. The lazier form or the better form, more efficient form for the client's sake is for the coach to sit back and relax and recognize the client's giving you so many good things, so many wonderful, beautiful pieces of, of their language, of their heart, as they're expressing themselves around the situation. As you hear that in the agenda setting, don't ask what they want by the end of the session as we talk about Friday's meeting. Ask at the end of the session, what do you want to help you prepare for this battle royale? Uh, and still maintain your dignity or something like that. I'm making things up in the moment, but you get the idea. It's so much stronger to use their language and their meaningful language, and it helps their thinking be faster. If they are thinking in their own words and they see those words reflected back to them, they don't have to process the new words. They're processing their own words in new combinations. Sift out the details, sift out the lesser things in favor of these meaningful pieces of language and you'll see a difference in your coaching as you ask questions around that language and allow the client to think more effectively for themselves. I hope this is helpful. Thank you for sitting here listening to me, uh, maybe at two times speed. Uh, just really appreciate you tuning in and hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you for coaching.